a blessed day to you all, our dear brothers and sisters in the Lord. I hope that you are all doing well and continuing to stay safe and healthy. Indeed, it has been a while since we last interacted with each other in this format. Personally, I am glad to be back here in our sanctuary as we prepare this video and we worship our Lord together. Today is the second Sunday after Pentecost, and we are now entering a time in our church calendar that we call the Ordinary Time. So after remembering the coming of the Holy Spirit during Pentecost, we are now celebrating the growing life of the church, us, the body of Christ, as we continue to witness for Him and live our lives for His glory. And today is also an extra special day as we are celebrating Youth Sunday, wherein we will induct our incoming officers for our youth fellowships. Indeed, there is much reason to come and worship our Lord together. Psalm 43 further gives this wonderful image of someone transformed by God through their worship. It says from verses 3 to 4, O oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and your tabernacle. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. And on the harp I will praise you, O God, my God. May this be our attitude as we proclaim to our God that He is God alone. Let us now proceed to our opening song. just the way it is. You are not a God created by human hands. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything we can give by your plan. That's just the
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty Father, indeed, you are God alone, and you are seated upon your throne in majesty and glory. We cannot hide anything from you, not our thoughts, doubts, or even our frustrations. You know them all, and nevertheless, you invite us to come before you. Cleanse us, O Lord, and fill us with the Holy Spirit, that our simple worship may be a pleasing aroma that is acceptable before you. May the meditation of our hearts and the words of our mouths truly honor and praise you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let us now give glory to our God as we sing the song Gloria in Excelsis. Glory to God in the highest and praise to His people on earth. with you. Let us pray together the collect for this week. Grant, Lord God, to all who have been baptized into the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, that as we have put away the old life of sin, so we may be renewed in the spirit of our minds and live in righteousness and true holiness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the lessons. The Old Testament reading is taken from Nehemiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 16. Now it happened when Sanballat, Tobiah, Jeshem the Arab, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall, and that there were no bricks left in it, though at that time I had not hung the doors in the gate, that Sanballat and Jeshem sent to me, saying, Come, let us meet together among the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me harm. So I sent messengers to them, saying, I am doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and go down to you? But they sent me this message four times, and I answered them in the same manner. Then Sanballat sent his servant to me as before, the fifth time, with an open letter in his hand. In it was written, It is supported among the nations, and Jeshem says that you and the Jews plan to rebel. Therefore, according to these rumors, you are rebuilding the wall that you may be their king. And you have also appointed prophets to proclaim concerning you at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah. Now these matters will be reported to the king. So come, therefore, and let us consult together. Then I sent to him, saying, 
No such things as you say are being done, but you invent them in your own heart. For they all were trying to make us afraid, saying, Their hands will be weakened in the work, and it will not be done. Now therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. Afterward, I came to the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Mehetabel, who was a secret informer. And he said, Let us meet together in the house of God within the temple. And let us close the doors of the temple, for they are coming to kill you. Indeed, at night they will come to kill you. And I said, Should such a man as I flee? And who is there, such as I, who would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. Then I perceived that God had not sent him at all, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me, because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. For this reason he was hired, that I should be afraid and act that way in sin, so that they might have cause for an evil report, that they might reproach me. My God, remember Tobiah and Sanballat according to these their works, and the prophetess Noadiah and the rest of the prophets who would have made me afraid. So the wall was finished on the 25th day of Elal, in 52 days. And it happened when all our enemies heard of it, and all the nations around us saw these things, that they were very disheartened in their own eyes, for they perceived that this work was done by our God. The Word of the Lord. The New Testament reading is taken from 2 Corinthians. Chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that grace having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is bought for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The Word of the Lord. Let us all rise for the proclamation of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is taken from Mark chapter 3, verses 20 to 35. And the multitude came together again so that they could not so much as eat bread. But when his own people heard about this, they went out to lay hold of him, for they said, He is out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebub, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. So he called them to him and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand but has an end. No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house. Assuredly, I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the sons of men and whatever blasphemies they may utter. 
But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is subject to eternal condemnation, because they said, He has an unclean spirit. Then his brothers and his mother came, and standing outside, they sent to him, calling him. And the multitude was sitting around him, and they said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. But he answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my brothers? And he looked around in a circle at those who sat about him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and mother. This is the gospel of the Lord. We are grateful for our many young people who have committed their lives to serve our Lord in our church through various ministry capacities. One such way is to serve as officers in our youth fellowships, in Joy Fellowship and Young People's Fellowship. So right now, we will have the induction proper for our incoming officers to be endorsed by Pastor Eileen Fung, the head of our Nurture and Discipleship Committee. We praise God for these young men and women who will be inducted today. We will now begin. Reverend Sir, I present unto you these persons to be admitted as officers of Joy Fellowship and Young People's Fellowship in this parish. Are the persons whom you present duly prepared by purity of life, acceptance of responsibilities, and regular attendance at church to perform their duties to the honor of God and the edifying of this church? I believe them so to be. Very well. Inductees, please raise your right hand. Dearly beloved, who desire to be admitted to your fellowship's office, are you convinced that the work is so important that you should be diligent and humble in performing the same? I am so convinced. Will you try faithfully and reverently to execute the duties of your office to the best of your ability, as unto the Lord, and not unto men. I will so strive, the Lord be my helper. Will you strive to always live in accordance with the sacredness of this office, conscious of the holiness of God, whom you serve? I will so strive, the Lord be my helper. Then may God guide and bless you in the doing of this work as your spiritual service. Inductees, you may now put down your right hand. I hereby admit you as officers of Joy Fellowship and Young People's Fellowship in this church in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And now you may begin with the litany for your identity in Christ. I am the salt and light of the world. I am the branch of the true vine. I have been chosen and appointed to bear fruit. I am a personal witness of Christ. I am God's temple. I am a minister of reconciliation for God. I am God's co-worker. I am God's workmanship. I may approach God with freedom and confidence. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us, a sacrifice for sin, and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
And now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. People of God, I present to you the new officers of joy and YPF. Let us uphold them in prayer. Good morning, everyone, and blessings to our inductees for this morning. I want to, first of all, thank the newly inducted Joy and YPF officers for your commitment to this service, especially at this time, and also for those who are outgoing officers of Joy and YPF. Maybe some of our church members are not aware, but our two youth fellowships have been doing very well with their programs. They've been hard at work to make sure that we get to reach our young people, even at this time. And uh, who would have thought that we could pull off programs like camps and different fellowships and different activities virtually? And I want to assure everyone that your work and your passion for this ministry is not unnoticed, and I pray that God will bless you very much for what you are doing right now. I would also like to extend my warmest appreciation to the advisors of these fellowships. We'd like to acknowledge as well Dani and Mike who are officially retiring their posts from Joy to give way to the younger advisors and to take lead in other ministries. And we appreciate very much the work, the time that they've put in to guide our young people not only during the pandemic time, but in the years past. Church, we are now halfway through the year, and we're taking this opportunity during our youth officers' induction service to be reminded of our theme. I hope you haven't forgotten it yet. Our theme for this year is to rise strong. So before we resume our I Believe series, we want to be reminded again of what we are trying to do for this year. Because our theme is not just for the officers and the leaders of this church, but it is for all of us, Stephenians, all of us who are followers of Jesus Christ. We have our mandate from Jesus Christ as summarized in our mission and vision statements, and it is exciting work. Imagine if we were to see our generation really living out the Great Commission and living out the Great Commandment, loving others, loving God, with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. If I may use Nehemiah's story figuratively, it feels like we are working on one part of the kingdom of God, building up one part of the wall, so that this part, in this part of the kingdom of the world, we can draw people to himself. We can build walls not to keep others out, but to invite people in to the goodness and the glory and majesty of God. But like what we see in Nehemiah, we also realize that while it is exciting to build the church and to see it growing, the task also comes with some challenges. The enemy and the world will use any means they can to keep us from finishing the Great Commission. We will meet situations that are irritating, troublesome, and even threatening. In light of this, what will you do? Stephenian, what will you do, O Christian? Will you stop? When, our, when we are faced with all these troubles, should we stop? Today, I pray that we can commit to boldly go and see our mission through. I pray that we will see God's hand moving, that God is at work even at this time, and that work is actually being done. One thing I've learned in the past eight years of being in this church is that we don't stop doing things just because it is difficult or because it is troublesome. I have learned that if the task at hand is important, then we should by all means do everything that we can to see it through. Like in this pandemic, we don't let it stop us, but we navigate our way through it through the challenges so we can worship together, even though virtually, 
and we try our best to gather together physically and to have fellowship, to study God's word, and to reach out to the world. Today we are taking a look at Nehemiah chapter 6. And one thing that we learn from this passage is that attacks can be expected when we build God's kingdom in this world. You know, it's tempting to think that when we do God's work, we shouldn't be meeting challenges, that everything should be easy. Because after all, this is what God wants, right? And when we do what God wants, everything should be easy. Our path should be straight. Eh? There should be no, no trouble at all. And everything should just fall into place. But while it is true that nothing can stop God from fulfilling his work, part of his plan is to allow challenges along the way. God has always said in his word that it is natural to expect opposition or attacks because his kingdom is so radical that it challenges the comforts of this world. For the enemies of Nehemiah, the rebuilding of Jerusalem, the walls of Jerusalem, meant that they would lose their power and influence over the area. According to history, Sanbalat was the governor of Samaria at that time. And on the other hand, scholars think that Tobiah and Geshem are also influential people in that whole region. Should God's people regain their territory, then these people would lose their power and their access in the area. And so what did they do? They did all sorts of things to stop the work. First, they used deception. Four times they tried to lure Nehemiah away from the work to kill him so that the work would stop. They also used slander. They slandered him and all the Jews saying that they were planning to rebel against the empire. Imagine if word like that went to the king. The king would have stopped the work. By doing so, they hoped that Nehemiah would stop for a while and talk with them because he was panicking. And hopefully they can stop the work because of his panic. Third, they tried to threaten him and tried to sabotage the work from within. We read that his opponents commissioned Shemaiah. He was a fellow Jew. They commissioned Shemaiah to try to convince Nehemiah that there was a threat upon his life and to go hide. And if they did that, then all of the people would see, oh, why is Nehemiah so afraid? Then maybe there's something wrong. Maybe we are at risk too. We should all hide. And then the work would stop and people would be so disheartened. Brothers and sisters, we see the same opposition throughout Scripture whenever Christ's kingdom is being built. We see something similar in our gospel story. The scribes were trying to discount Jesus by saying that the source of his power came from the demon Beelzebub. Why? Probably for the same reason as Nehemiah's opponents. They would lose their power and their influence over the region. Nowadays, we too, as a church, we are under attack. The church, of course, is not perfect, and we repent of unchristian acts that we've done or people, Christians throughout history, have done in the past. And it is only right when we suffer the consequences of it. But even if we try to do what God wants, even if we try to do things that are virtuous, try to do things that are good in the sight of God and the world, we still get mocked for it. We still get attacked for it. We are still persecuted for it. We get mocked for serving in the church despite our love and our service to our parents or to those around us. To our young people who are serving in the fellowships, your batchmates and friends may see you as weird for doing what you do. They don't understand why you are spending so much time doing this when you could be doing other things with them. People will think there's already so much to do at school or at work or with our families. Why be active with serving in the church? 
we may be judged as unloving and discriminating as we hold fast to God's ideals, even though if we do it out of love. No matter how much good we do in society, we see the world so easily dismissing us as bigots, as radicals, as people who are unloving and uncaring. The world will fight God's work because, like Sanbalat, Tobiah, Geshem, the world does not want to be told that it is lost. The world doesn't want to be told that its ways are broken. Despite the imperfections and the inability to give hope, the world wants to insist that their ways are what is good. It will use deception, slander, sabotage, and even threats to make us question our faith in God, to make us question the work that we are doing. But brothers and sisters, especially to our young officers right now, we must keep at the work. We must never be surprised and let the difficulties, the attacks, stop us. This is why we are going through the I Believe series this year. We want to call to mind what we believe, why we believe, and what it means for our lives as we go out into the world. We are not sugarcoating the ministry that everything will be well, that we go out with power and everything will be victorious, that there will be no opposition, no hardships. Rather, like Christ, we are saying that we will meet opposition, but that will not stop the work from flourishing. Why not? Because we have the greatest defense, and that is the clarity of God's word, the clarity of the mission that God has given us. Because the proper way to defend ourselves against the world's attacks is to be clear with our mission as God's people. Because clarity will grant us the boldness that we need. For Nehemiah, because he was clear with his mandate, he knew to put off anything that would keep him from doing the work. Because he was sure that this is what they should be doing, anything that comes to him that told him to stop the work, he would dismiss it and proceed with doing the work. He would do everything that he can. He would adjust just so he could keep at the work. It didn't matter whether he knew that it was a plot, that what came to him was a plot, or whether it was not. Okay? He was able to respond properly, whether the opposition or the attacks came from the enemy, or even that it came from someone from within, an ally. He knew what had to be done, and he refused to let anything stop him. And when you think about it, that's usually the case, right? When we are sure that we are supposed to be doing something, maybe we are commanded to do so, or we know that that is part of our commitment, our responsibility, then whatever people say, we will pursue it. We will see it through. And so to all of us and to our young officers at this time, our mandate is clear. We are to rise strong and to raise up generations of mature followers of Christ. We are on a pursuit to be a church who makes disciples wherever we are, rooted in the word, reverent in worship, and fervent in prayer. And again, these are things that we didn't just make up. These are things that come straight from God's word. This mandate comes from Christ's own lips that he commands us to make disciples and to love God and others. We are to do so with all our hearts, all our souls, our minds, and our strength. Are we living out this mandate or are we letting the world suppress us? Are we letting our worldly desires lead us to keep making excuses 
brothers and sisters, like in this pandemic, do we let it stop us, keep us from pursuing Him and pursuing the work of His kingdom? Just as Nehemiah longed to see the walls of Jerusalem rebuilt, do we long to see Christ's kingdom built up? And so, what do we do? How do we respond? We respond by keeping at the work with boldness. We have to grow in Christ-likeness, both in our character, but also in our preoccupation, in the things that we do, our priorities. All of us in this church have a unique ministry. Because the church is not just about the programs or the structures. More importantly, the church is you. It is us in fellowship with one another. It is us fulfilling our mission together as lights of the world. To our officers of Joy and YPF, your role in our mission is to draw high school and college level seekers to the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. You have to do everything that you can so that they will see Christ in all his goodness, in all his glory, in all his beauty. All of us in this church have a unique ministry and placement to grow and to draw people to Christ and to help them to grow up in Christ. Yes, while it is true that even if we refuse to be used by God, God can find other ways of fulfilling his plans. But then, it is not an excuse. At the end of the day, what it reveals about us is our unwillingness to give God what he deserves. And so instead, like Paul, as we read in our epistle this morning, I hope that we can echo his words as well. Allow me to read to you again what our epistle says, starting from verse 16. Paul says, Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Brothers and sisters, Sifinians, the Israelites were called back to rebuild the city. Today, Christ invites us to build his church, his great city. We praise God very much for these young people who have set the example to work for God, to serve in his kingdom. And we thank God for the many leaders and servers who have labored and endlessly served during this pandemic. But this question is not just for them. This is for all of us who are following Jesus Christ, for all of us who claim to be children of God. Will you commit to building up his church? Will you rise strong with all of us? You know, like Nehemiah's experience, the journey may be cumbersome, and when you think about it, it may seem troublesome. But the work itself, it's not. The work itself and its end goal to glorify God and to build up his church is something that we must long for, something that we long to see in our lifetime. So let me close by briefly adding this motivation from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. It's a very familiar verse to many of us. In defending his ministry, Paul declares, For the love of Christ compels us. 
because we may be clear with our mission and our vision. And it gives us boldness and confidence about what we should do. But to push us to do it, to make us stand up, to arise and to rise strong and do it, our motivation should be the knowledge that Christ loves us. That as you remember the cross, as you remember Christ coming to save us and loving us and going through all of that, then that is our motivation to go with boldness as we clearly see the path that we have to do. So as we continue with our I Believe series next week, may we not only be clear of our mission and our mandate, but may we also be motivated by God's love for us so that we may see the great commission fulfilled in our lifetime. God bless. We praise God for that wonderful sermon that we have heard from His Word. In response, let us now declare what we believe using the Nicene Creed. So church, what do we believe? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. Conceived by the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As today is the first Sunday of the month, we will use this time to remind ourselves again of our church mission and vision statements. So first, let us proclaim what we are to do as a church by declaring the mission statement together. To raise up generations of mature followers of Christ, to be salt and light in the world who will love God, love others, and make disciples. And how do we want to impact our community and fulfill our mission? Let us declare our vision statement together. SSP envisions to impact its community through members who are diligent in making disciples wherever they are, rooted in the word, reverent in worship, and fervent in prayer. Please kneel if able or sit as we will proceed to the prayers of the people to be led by members of Joy and Young People's Fellowship. For the Church Gracious Father, we pray for your holy Catholic or universal church, filled with all fruit, in all fruit, with all peace. Where it is unclean, purify it. Where it is in error, direct it. Where in anything it is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is in want, provide for it. Where it is divided, reunite it. For the sake of Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Savior. Amen. For the good use of time. O oh God, this course of this busy life, give us times of refreshment and peace. Grant that we may use our leisure time to rebuild our bodies and renew our minds, that our spirits may be open to your goodness, 
and in response, enable us to serve you more. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For the right use of God's gift. Almighty God, whose loving hand has given us all that we possess, grant us grace that we may honor you with what we have, and remembering that one day we must give an account, may we be faithful stewards of your blessings. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For those who influence public opinion, Almighty God, you proclaim your truth in every age through many voices. Direct in our time, we pray that those who exercise influence in the sphere of public opinion may do their part in making the hearts of people wise, their minds sound, and their will righteous. To the honor of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For the gainful employment of those in need. Heavenly Father, we remember before you those who suffer anxiety and insecurity from lack of work. Guide the people of this land to use both public and private wealth wisely, that all may find suitable and fulfilling employment and receive just compensation for their labor. To Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. For the preservation of God's creation, Almighty God, in giving us dominion over things on earth, made us fellow workers in your creation. Give us wisdom to use our natural resources responsibly, so that no one may have to suffer for our own sins, and that generations yet to come may continue to praise you for your abundant blessings. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. For young persons, God our Father, you see your children growing up in an unsteady and confusing world. Reveal to us how your ways give more life than the ways of the world. That following you is better than chasing after selfish goals. Help us to take failure, not as a measure of our work, but as a chance for a new start. Give us strength to hold our faith in you and to keep alive our joy in you. And to always appreciate your gifts of family, friends, church, and a good education through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For all parents, Almighty God, giver of life and love, grant our parents wisdom and devotion in the management of their lives, that each may be to the other a strength in need, a counselor in perplexity, a comfort in sorrow, and a companion in joy. And so meet in their wills together in your will, and their spirits in your spirit that they may nurture a harmonious life together in love and peace all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For our guidance, direct us, O Lord, that in our endeavor to learn and be trained up in character, wisdom, and responsibility, we may receive your most gracious favor. Help us that in all the things which we have begun, continued and ended, we may glorify your holy name. And finally, by your mercy, that we may obtain everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us now spend some time in silent prayer as we pray for our own needs and the needs of others. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people, especially the petitions of our youth. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
Hebrews chapter 4 reminds us this. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. With this assurance, let us boldly and humbly come before our Lord and confess our sins to Him using the prayer of confession. Let us pray together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Behold the mercy of our God. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. In preparation to remember the Holy Eucharist, let us pray together the prayer of humble access. Most merciful Lord, we do not trust in our own merits to come to your table, but in your boundless grace. You have invited us to come to the table of the kingdom of heaven. Help us to partake of the body and blood of your loving son, Jesus Christ, that we may evermore live in him and he in us. Amen. Let us now stand for the peace. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, Peace I live with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. If you are watching together as a family, you may use this time to share the peace of the Lord with one another. If you are watching alone, I extend the peace of the Lord with you. Psalm 50 verse 14 gives us this reminder. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. In place of our usual practice, we will give to the Lord a song of offering, reminding ourselves to know, love, and serve our Lord. Let us proceed to sing this song.
brothers and sisters, we now proceed to the remembrance of the Eucharist. Though we are separated by time and space, we still remember that we are one body in Christ, and we remember the sacrifice that has brought us together. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Please kneel for this portion or please be seated. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us in your image. And when we fell into sin and became subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for all mankind to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim together the mystery of the faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We remember our redemption, O Father, in observing these things, we recall his death, resurrection, and ascension, and we align ourselves anew. Sanctify us, we pray, that we may faithfully serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and that the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. All honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us now take this time to tell God our thoughts in reflection of what Christ has done for us.
Let us now pray together the post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have been feeding us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now receive the Lord's blessing. To God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. To Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all now and always. Amen. Please be seated first for some announcements. I hope that our Lord was pleased with that worship that we offered Him today. We would like to request that we keep our youth officers in our prayers as they continue to serve through JOY and YPF. Indeed, it is not easy to continue to prepare and execute programs when we are constrained in this uh, virtual setup. Nevertheless, just like most of our ministries, we press on and we persevere, depending on the grace of our Lord and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. We would also like to inform our church members of the passing of Mr. Benito Kuuigam. He has passed away from a ripe old age of 96, and the family will have a memorial service for him today at 10 o'clock a.m. We have made the Zoom details available on your screen. Additionally, as was announced last week, I would like to remind everyone regarding the update of our membership information. This is to update our church records and will serve as our registration for the upcoming vestry election this year, should we choose to use an alternative method of election. So if you have not done so, we advise all our baptized and confirmed members to go to our website and click on the banner in order to provide your latest information. Should you have any questions or concerns, feel free to get in touch with us through our church office. So may we be filled with the grace and strength of our Lord as we go forth this week to proclaim His name and to live our lives for His glory. Let us all continue to be channels of God's grace to the people around us. So may we be filled with the grace and strength of our Lord as we go forth this week and live our lives for His glory. Let us continue to be channels of God's grace to the people around us. Let us now stand for our closing song as we are reminded to live our lives as an offering for Christ our King. For the cause of Christ the King, we give our praise to the sun for the cause of Christ we go with joy to reap with faith to sow as many see and many put their trust in the sun Christ we
to cries of rage of crucify and o'er the cross as every sin was laid on the sun to the king who conquered death to free the poor and the oppressed for lasting Let it be my life's refrain to live as Christ, to die as gain, deny myself, take up my cross and fall.